that's that one. Um, actually, well, here's a here's what a, a VM neck that's also. You can see I've started to sand this one a little bit. I was showing you guys that earlier before we had the camera on. Uh, a lot of work left in that one still to get it right, but that one's been fretted. Okay. And the frets are all in. Cool. So this one's you know probably an hour and a half from ready to, ready to spray. Mm -hmm. Now this one, this neck was made completely by hand. Yeah. Um, and that's a much more involved process. Um, I, I can only imagine. So, I'm just going to turn it over real quick to just... This body was, was cut on the CNC. Okay. Um, but the only part of it that was cut was the profile mm -hmm. and the pockets. Okay. And this one on the back. And we also drilled these. Okay. Okay. The rest of this is hand carved. I actually haven't finished carving this yet. That's what these guidelines are here for. This needs to be quite a bit thinner here. Mm -hmm. um, this was hand carved. Uh, one of my favorite tools for carving. Stupid little angle grinder. Um, with a nice rough grit, you can really oh, wow. take material off quick. Huh. Um, Obviously different. So sandpaper grits to well, no I, I just use the rough on this and mm -hmm. the rest of it's refined by hand oh wow um so this one what i'll do is I'll, again i'll figure out how to bolt this thing up here mm -hmm. and mount it on that vice okay and then i'll stand here i've put pics on facebook of me like yeah oh yeah done up and you know and this thing again is loud um but it's just because this thing turns like this i like to use this edge for for the carving so i'm always at the right angle and then I got to get in here and do that. Wow. Now this I can't do entirely with this tool because it's concave, it's too mm -hmm. concave. So I have a microplane glorified cheese grater which has got these little teeth. Nice. And that, I used use that to do a lot of this work here. Um, I also use the saw rasp for things like cleaning these up. I use this one actually for this. Quite a bit. Okay. Um, this one, this neck was carved by hand so far. It still needs to finish being refined. This area here was done using this. Okay. Um, you can kind of tell the marks. It looks like beaver chew marks right now, but but that was done using using this guy here. Okay. Or or spindle sanding. Wow. A lot of times I'll use this little spindle sander over here to do these blends and the whole volute thing. Wow. Um, but this one, so I use a caliper to measure the thickness. <clears throat> and I have target thicknesses when I start carving these things. So this one currently measures 843 and I want it to finish at, when it's done fine sanding, about 810. Hmm. Wow. And then That's... I go about a hundred thousandths more as I go up the neck. Okay. So this one's about nine ten right now. So what I have to do is take more meat off here mm -hmm. and blend it up to here and then blend the rest out to the edges and just make it comfortable. Um, so this is all handmade. Again, yeah. learning this is just doing just um, <laughs> trial and error, trial and error. Um, uh, well, I, I can vaguely remember before I had all the steps sort of internalized really worrying about the process. What steps gonna do first? What if I do that? And what if I do that step and then do that step? Well, if I do that step first, then I won't be able to do that. Um, things like, like this neck has a, um, has a matching end piece on it right here that's glued on there. Mm -hmm. And so I had to route that recess there. After I glued the fingerboard on, after the neck was fit to the body, but before I radius the fingerboard, because it's flat. So if I hadn't, if I had radius the fingerboard, and then I'd have, I'd have had to figure out how to, how do I, uh oh, to, you know, wrong step, wrong time, big trouble, start over. So there was a lot of sort of reasoning, and I'd write things. I had yellow legal pads with like step one, step two, all this stuff, and trying to sort it out. Um, now I've done it so much. Now it's all internalized, and I just, yeah. I just do it. Cool. Um, so. How about top to bottom finishing one of these? How much time are you talking 
I mean, obviously, depending on how busy the shop is and how busy you are. Well, but... yeah. Well, I always think about it in terms of, you know, labor hours. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if, if I didn't do anything else, if I just came back here and did this, how long would it take? Um, I haven't really thought about this in quite a while. You know, with the CNC cut body so that, you know, all, all the pickup cavities and the neck cavity all are lined up, um, the carving and everything, you know, the body probably has... 20 hours into it okay and neck is probably somewhere around between 30 and 40 hours by the time it's done um and then you know there's paint work um and it comes back painted so i don't count that mm -hmm. and then it's you know maybe a day's worth for assembly eight oh. hours for okay assembly. so fret work you do the fret work shielding install the pickups electronics put the nut in install the bridge Tuning machine, string it up. You know. There you go. Yeah. Beautiful. But I I grab this template because this is how I oh. this is how I cut the neck shapes out, right? I, this isn't the exact. This is an old template. I have a new one that I use for mm -hmm. these now. Um, but basically, the neck is a raw slab of wood. I'm trying to see if I got any other chunks of laying around. I don't really. Um, it just be square, right? With, uh, with the fingerboard on it, but mm -hmm. slotted. Um, and so I would just double stick it onto here, and then take it to the little um, router table, mm -hmm. and, and the bearing would ride here. The bearing would ride on here, and the cutter would be above it, and the cutter would take the wood off, then step the bearing up a little higher, run it again, a little higher again. Um, and then, you know, the problem with these kind of necks is that it's a, it's a tilted headstock, so it's not like a fender style where it's set back. Mm -hmm. So the angle is different. So you can't just run a bearing all the way up around here. You have to do it here. So, um, so I have a template that I use for that. <laughs> this is one of the <laughs> oldest and most used things I have here. Really? <laughs> Look at this thing. So all these I use. This is these are all score marks from when I double stick tape. This onto the raw headstock, and okay. then those are the hole marks for for the tuning machines. So this piece gets stuck on here at some point in the process. Roughly when I've done you know this part or whatever, and so then I do bearing trim around the headstock that way. Huh. Then make sure make sure I mark the holes before I pop it off. <laughs> And pop it off, and then the holes I drill them out. And, nice. Um, the the logo on here is done on the CNC machine. So I put that little tiny fret cutter bit in there, mm -hmm. and I would screw this onto here with a couple of screws with some big washers, mm -hmm. and sort of line it up, and then put this in the in the router, and then the router would come down. Oh man! I'd have to like run it in the air and try to get it lined okay. up exactly right. Real nut. <laughs> not the most easy way to do this, but I only do a few of these, so it's 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 not that hard. It takes about ten minutes more than it would if I actually okay. made like tooling, nice. like with a reverse cut to line it up. That would be a smarter way to go. But um, so that gets cut, and then I also have a fixture for for cutting the little Babylonian pearl logos out okay. three at a time too. Cool. And then usually the, I can just clamp them in. I don't even have to glue them. They're okay. Tight. The fit is so tight. How about if uh, just advice for somebody just starting off doing this I mean just do it <laughs> um, well yeah I mean <laughs> apprenticeships get into some place where you can kind of well, cut your teeth or if, if you love it you're gonna do it I think I was talking to the guys at no trouble about this a little while ago and did an interview with them what do you what do you tell people who want to build guitars well um, Go for it. <laughs> yeah. Go for it. Um, you know, just do it. Learn it. There's a ton of information out there. I mean, you're getting some here now. Yeah. Um, and there's, I mean, with YouTube and, and websites and blogs and forums, I mean, there's mountains of information out there. The question is, how do you, you know, wade through it all and get enough to have a working knowledge of what mm -hmm. you want to do? There's books, whatever, classes. <clears throat> so if you really want to do it, if you have the passion to do it, you'll do it. Nothing will stop you. Um, 
just make sure you're doing it for the right reason. Make sure you're doing it because it's who you are and not because you want to be famous or rich or well-known or any of those things because yeah. you'll get tired of it. You'll burn out. You won't maybe achieve what you think you should achieve in the time you think you should achieve it. And you know, you'll be unhappy. So uh, if you're going to do it, make sure you love it. Make sure it's who you are. That's probably the best advice I can give cool. about about anything, really. Building guitars, anything. Yeah. Whatever you want to do. Nice. Make sure it's who you are, which is a process. Um, you know, you could change your mind. It could be who you are now. In five years down the road, you're like, that's not who I am anymore. <laughs> what do I do now? Yeah. All right, figure out something else. Cool. So. All right, man. Thanks for walking us through, man. Of course. Awesome. Yeah, anytime. <laughs>